welcome everybody to um, this afternoon's uh, staff forum and welcome to those who are uh, dialing in from our satellite uh, sites. Um, I'd like to start by um, acknowledging the land on which we're meeting and um, my uh, respect to Elders past, present and emerging. <coughs> Um, I'd also like to uh, welcome Maxine Morand, who is the chair of the Peter Mac board, and she is joining us here today. So there is an opportunity at the end of the session for um, you to ask the executive questions, but I guess, you know, without giving Maxine any notice, um, there is an opportunity if you wanted a question to the board um, as well. Um, we've got a number of things to cover today, but before we get into the business, um, I'm going to hand over to Meredith Crow because we're implementing a new system whereby you could ask those questions using a, um, a product called Menti. So. Thank you, Lisa. Ooh. One more. This one, okay. Um, so my name is Meredith Crow. I'm the Interim Organisational Development Manager here at Peter Mac out of the People and Culture team. And we've been working quite closely with our communications in the last few months to think about how we can make our all staff communications a little bit more interactive, a little bit more fun, a little bit more two way. And one of the ways that we're going to do that is to implement a digital system to be able to ask questions throughout the all staff forum that today are going to be moderated by Jai from communications. And we're going to use them at the end to then ask questions to the executive or to to our speakers who have given us information today. So if you could all grab out your mobile phones or a laptop or another device, I know that's not usually what we say when we come to seminars, we need to put them away and listen very carefully. But today, if you could all grab out your mobile phone, go to the website www.menti.com, M-E-N-T-I, and then enter the code 7348-32. So once you've popped that in, that should bring you to a screen where you have an option to ask a question. Or the other thing that you can do is actually upvote questions that have been asked by others. So if you want to ask your own question, you can. Otherwise, you can keep an eye on the screen and look at what other people are thinking they might want to find out from one of our speakers today or from one of the executive or from Maxine, to be put on the spot again, uh, and, and upvote that one to try and get it to the top. So we're going to close the questions at about 10 past one to give Jai uh, and our communications team an operation... Uh, an, an opportunity to moderate and to group questions that have been asked if there are any duplicates. And then at the end, we'll have the screen come up with a few questions that we're going to put to our speakers. If anybody's having any problems getting into that screen, just pop your hand up and I'll nip round once I have finished here. Almost now. All right. Thanks very much. I'm going to hand back to Lisa who, uh, for the business update. Thank you. So you'll all be distracted now looking at your, um, your phone, um, but feel free to um, populate those questions. Um, we'll just uh, go through just a couple of things that we will be covering uh, today. There will be the usual business uh, update. Um, talk about the EMR because it is coming. Um, as I was saying to someone the other day, it's a pregnancy away. Um, which <laughs> in my previous role, we used to equate everything in, in, in pregnancy cycles. So we're pregnant and um, the EMR is coming. Um, we'll also talk about the uh, Metro Tunnel uh, project, uh, a little bit of an update on that. Um, and then we'll be, I'll be handing over to uh, Ricky Johnson to talk about um, the research activities and then Helen will be talking about the Pedal People Matter survey results. Um, and then we will be um, discussing the Unite for Fight Cancer um, that the foundation is running. And um, Jennifer's here to talk about that. And then finishing up with Are You OK Day, which is the 12th of um, September, so not far away. Okay. Um, it feels much later in the year, financial year than August, but it is only August. Um, we are still negotiating um, a budget, and it would be fair to say that um, with the department, that's still several weeks away. We can't afford to wait, um, so we are locking people's um, budgets in, and um, 
working um, you know, towards uh, what is in people's budgets at the moment. And then if we get some windfalls or changes, then um, we can certainly address them as we get closer uh, to that time. Um, as you can see, activity um, continues to, to be strong um, in really sort of all sort of fields, I guess, uh, for the surgical team. It'll be no surprise um, to you that um, there's been some big increases, particularly around um, bone and soft tissue, um, colorectal and um, skin. Um, in particular. Um, again, um, with our WIS, as we've discussed on numerous occasions, uh, we um, still have very high activity, and those of you who are working in the wards at the moment will know that, um, that to be true and that we've had a large demand for beds, um, particularly in the last few weeks. And again, the uh, radiotherapy activity is, um, is strong. As I said, we're still in negotiations around the phasing of um, activity. We need to factor in what we actually do um, next year around the time of the EMR go live. So more than likely we will do, hopefully do more work up front so that we um, can slow down activity as much as you can. Um, to give people that sort of breathing space while they're doing the training and um, particularly around the go live. Acknowledge that, you know, it will be, everything will be slower um, for those first few weeks. So just before we sort of move um, on to, um, to Ricky's part, just a couple of other things to, um, to talk about. So we've mentioned the, the EMR. The EMR team have a survey out uh, at the moment. They're particularly looking for uh, clinicians to talk about and answer a quick survey on their experiences of using IT now so that we can compare those results once the EMR goes live and hopefully um, your life will be quicker, easier, um, as a result of the EMR. So if I could please encourage you uh, to go on to the um, intranet page and to complete that survey so that we've got some baseline uh, data on your satisfaction with using the systems as they are today. <clears throat> also um, a big plug that we're still looking for super users. Um, an expression of interest has gone out, but we haven't had um, as many um, people put their hand up as we would like. Um, we need 300 super users. Uh, that is a lot of people. So um, talk to your team um, and your colleagues about who from your areas you think um, might be interested and, if need be, tap them on the shoulder to get them to apply. We're particularly interested in, um, we need 20 medical specialists to be trainers. Um, so again, if you know of people who um, haven't applied or might be interested, then um, please um, send them our way. You don't need any special training. Anyone can be a, a super user, so don't be deterred if you're not an IT guru. Um, it, we need, as you, you know, that large volume. So, and we will train you in what you need to, to know and do. And it's a great opportunity for people to, um, you know, do something a bit different, to be involved in this once in a lifetime um, project um, and, you know, be in the coalface and helping your colleagues and other colleagues to, you know, implement this big change um, as smoothly as possible. On, still on the topic of the EMR, we would like to, um, there's been a lot of work and a lot of activity, um, but the EMR project team would particularly like to recognise a couple of people who um, they have um, highlighted as going beyond and above. Um, and they are Sandra Day from Day Therapy, Catherine Downey um, from Pharmacy, Amelia Lee from um, Dietetics and 
Danny Bullen um, from the psychology team. So um, a special thanks to, to those people um, and that your efforts have been uh, recognised. Um. <laughs> also, if anyone's interested, um, there is an EMR grand round um, to be held at the Children's um, Lecture Theatre. No, sorry, here, sorry, run by the Children's um, on the 17th of September at midday. Um, so feel free to um, attend that and hear about the children's um, experiences. The Metro Tunnel. So the Metro Tunnel is still coming, um, albeit it's a very slow, um, tedious uh, process. Um, they are still um, finalising what they're calling service proving. So they've had lots of drawings and uh, things that they have obtained, which identify where such things as power, sewer, natural gas, IT cables and things go under the road around the whole precinct. And then what they had to do was actually prove that those drawings were actually accurate. Um, and so that work has been happening since February. It's taken much longer than they had anticipated, um, but they do think they now know where things are. Um, in relation to that service um, relocation works, which is very important. Um, and so sometime in September, there has been another slight delay in that they actually haven't got their um, permits that they um, are required. But hopefully by the end of September, they'll actually start to do some of those works. And so you'll see a bit more of a hive of activity um, on the Grattan Street, Elizabeth Street, Royal Parade sort of intersection there. <laughs> Um, it's external. It shouldn't um, impact us uh, at all operationally. It is around, um, you know, major infrastructure works, um, but it will be congested. There will be times where they will be diverting um, traffic slightly, as they have been uh, for the last couple of months. It's all after hours uh, predominantly, so um, it shouldn't be um, too big an impact, but there will be people um, doing work around. And that will continue for the next sort of couple of months. Um, it's still not clear exactly when the tunnel borers are coming and when the major station works will happen. Um, but the first thing they need to do is to divert and relocate some of the services that are going directly where the new station and train lines um, are going. Um, the other thing to note is public transport won't be um, affected by the Metro Tunnel. They are affected by the tram strike today. <laughs> um, so just to um, you know, keep you up to date, if you just keep regularly checking the, the intranet, um, again, we update things as they, um, as they become closer. The next thing on my um, list to talk to you about is the My Health Record. So most of you hopefully will have heard about this. This is a Commonwealth government um, or federal government initiative whereby um, people have their own electronic record and hospitals and um, medical services will be uploading information into that um, My Health record for patients um, to view their own records. Um, and we will be starting to up live, or upload things and for it to go live from the 4th of September. The first lot of things from um, Peter Mack's perspective that will go into that portal is um, people's x-rays, so targeted x-rays. There is about a three-week lag time between having had the X-ray and it being uploaded into the portal, and that is to ensure that patients have received the um, information of the results of that X-ray prior to reading about it um, on the portal. Again, it's, it's, your, it's your own individual portal. You um, determine who can and can't have access to it, um, but over time, more and more information will be um, uploaded um, into that. Um, but the first tranche is the radiology um, things. Um, and it's expected that, um, as I said, the start of that will be from next week, because it's September. 
The other thing I want to plug is the Peter Mac Awards. Um, so hopefully you've seen um, the emails go out. Hopefully you're already thinking about who in your team and um, in other teams that you think should be nominated for an award. And I would encourage you to put pen to paper um, to acknowledge often those quiet achievers um, to, you know, so we can actually recognise them at the AGM in um, October. So please, you know, put your nominations in. They actually close next Friday. So um, you, everyone needs to get onto it. And I think it would be fair to say um, we've been a bit tardy. So uh, please put your thinking caps on, put pen to paper and get those applications in um, by next week. If you've got any questions in relation to that, then don't hesitate to contact somebody in, um, in People and Culture. I hope people are writing lots of questions on their mentee. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Ricky Johnson, who's going to talk to you about research. Thanks, Lisa, and uh, welcome, everyone. So I've got a couple of good news stories to present, and I think it reflects um, a lot of hard work that's gone in by this organisation over a number of years, um, and it's thrilling to be able to, to provide uh, an update on some of our most recent successes. So the first was this, um, and this was uh, something that was um, sponsored by the Nature um, uh, Journal Group, where um, they've basically gone along and, and benchmarked organisations according to research input, input um, impact and outputs. Um, and um, what they've, uh, the Nature Journal have done is they've put together what they call the Nature Index, where they use a series of, of, of journals and publications in a series of journals over a number of years. And in this case, uh, it was for, um, from January 2015 to 2018. And um, looking at a subset of around 55 journals from this, um, from this group, um, looked at the publications from um, healthcare organisations across the world and ranked everyone. So they ranked all the organisations according to impact using, uh, using these criteria. Now, um, it's a bit of an inexact science because there's only a, you know, a, limited, a relatively lim limited number of journals that are looked at, but at least it's uniformly done across all, um, all healthcare um, uh, providers across the world. So, pleasingly... Um, Peter Mack made the top 200 and it's listed there as number 112. And I think, um, you know, that's something for all of us to be proud of. Um, it re reflects not only the work that's done during this period, but the lead-up work um, that had been done across the organisation uh, and across our entire uh, research uh, ecosystem. You can see there we're in uh, pretty good company, um, you know, with some outstanding um, healthcare um, institutions um, yeah, in Europe uh, and in the US uh, listed there. So um, our aim will be to rise up through the ranks from 112 uh, in the next few years. You can see there that our score, and there's, there's different ways that these are scored, but our score for international collaboration is very high. So we ranked 45th in that list uh, in terms of our international collaborations. Again, I think really reflecting um, um, really our strategy here at Peter Mac, uh, which is to not just be the best in Victoria, not just to be the best uh, in Australia, but actually to to, um, to be one of the best in the world. So I think it's something that, again, uh, we should be rightfully proud of, and we'll continue to track this. Um, second thing um, is around some promotions that have come about in the last uh, few months, and this is through the Sir Peter McCallum Department of, uh, of Oncology. Um, we're very interested in expanding our research faculty across all of Peter Mac. Um, the idea of having a research faculty and formulating that um, came, about, came about through the, the recent review of research uh, that we had in April. And um, uh, aligned with that uh, are some um, new appointments. So at the professorial level, there's been two appointments uh, Linda Malishkin and, and Kieran Harvey, and at the associate professor level, uh, there have been um, five appointments there: Heather Thorne, Kylie Gorringe, Karen Shepherd, 
Jane Oliara and Belinda Parker. And I think this is uh, due recognition for all of those individuals for the outstanding work they've been doing uh, at Peter Mac and, and, and now have been um, achieved either a professorial or an associate professor appointment. Now, these things are not just uh, handed out. They are um, competitive processes. And certainly at the professorial level, there is a separate um, committee that exists within the University of Melbourne that assesses uh, all of these applications. Uh, and determines um, appointment at this level on merit. So uh, certainly to Linda and Kieran, congratulations to both of you on achieving uh, th this wonderful recognition. And the final thing uh, I'd like to talk to you about was um, the announcement on Thursday um, of the NHMRC Investigator Grant uh, Scheme. So this is a new scheme that's been brought in this year. It replaces um, what was um, traditionally the, the fellowship scheme and now incorporates uh, essentially uh, some project grant funding. So previously the fellowship scheme only came with a salary for the investigator that, that uh, won an award uh, and then he or she would then have to go out and get some, some funding uh, through usually through the project grants or, or possibly through the program grant scheme to provide um, uh, direct costs. So um, Peter Mac put in 27 applications, 12 were funded. Um, providing a success rate of 44.4%. The national average was not 17%, it was 13.2%. That's listed in that, um, in that table below. Uh, and the amount funded was um, a little over $19.5 million. This is an outstanding result to Peter Mac. Um, I've identified there the, the, the uh, recipients of those awards. The other thing that is really pleasing is the breadth of those awardees, from very senior people to more, more junior investigators, um, covering um, clinical research, translational research and more fundamental research. Um, you can see there just um, how we ranked in terms of our success at the national level. As I said, the national success rate was 13.2%. Um, the average, um, the average um, uh, investigator grant in, across the nation was around about $1.4 million. Our average was about $1.6 million, so not only do did we do well from a percentage perspective? Uh, we did well in, in terms of funding. Um, we did well in comparison to the other um, uh, institutions within Victoria. Um, and of the 42 grants that were won or the 42 investigator awards that were provided to the University of Melbourne, uh, we had 12 of them, which I think is really reflective of the status of Peter Mac uh, within the University of Melbourne. And just for comparison, uh, Walter and Eliza Hall Institute also did extremely well uh, with about 30% uh, success um, for, for that institution. And for us, that's always been one of the benchmarks. Walter and Eliza Hall Institute has 100 years of history of excellence in, in health and medical research. So we always try and benchmark ourselves against the best. And I think you can see there just how well we're doing. So uh, to those uh, individuals who were successful in that scheme, um, sincere uh, and hearty congratulations. Um, for those that missed out in this scheme, um, we will work with you to uh, make your applications even more compelling in the next round, which is coming around in October. And I just want to give a, a shout out to our grants team headed, headed by Sybil Wilson, uh, who is in the audience. This grants team is one of the best in the country. I would argue the best in the country and, um, and really um, works very closely with all grant um, 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 recipients to have put in the very best uh, application that they can, the most compelling application. And it's not all just dotting of I's and crossings of, uh, of T's, it's how the grant is formulated and the pitch that's made, and that's extremely uh, important. So I think there are three little vignettes, I think, of, of research at Peter Mac covering the whole uh, research enterprise uh, and just how well we are going. And I think this is um, probably reflective not only of the talent that we have within this place, um, but I think of the support going from our board to our executive team to everyone on the ground. Um, and I think we are well placed to, um, to expand upon the success in, the, in the, the months and years to come. Thanks very much. Hello, I'm going to be sharing a bit of information about the People Matter survey results. We had um, talked about it at the last All Staff Forum, but I promise that we share a bit more detail this time. So we'll talk a bit about that. Certainly done some analysis and um, there's a bit of work happening. So 
There are two actions that are uh, being undertaken to ensure we respond to the overwhelming feedback, which, for those that didn't hear, we, we achieved a 67 per cent completion rate, which was uh, the best in the state and certainly the best amongst all the hospitals as well, which is an outstanding result. And what that means is that we now have accurate information from you to then to ensure that the actions we take are, uh, in fact, uh, going to be targeted to where they are needed. The, um, we will be looking at the organisation-wide uh, response and, and I'll be sharing a bit uh, about that today. And, of course, what you'll be seeing in your teams, in your departments, is your leaders are being briefed with the business partners from the people and culture team and uh, informed of the results for your team and then there'll be team workshops being run so that you have a chance to have a look at that, um, analyse those results and come up with some solutions that would work for your particular department. We can tailor those for you as well. This is just the, the format of the, of the survey um, framework. So we had uh, information provided to us about the organisational level uh, feedback and what people are thinking at that level. At the job and team level, uh, it talks about the work group and the job roles. And then the individual level, of course, um, the psychological conditions in which you're working. And then there's an overall sort of people outcome understanding as well on things like engagement and satisfaction. These are the um, organisational-wide um, results as a snapshot. Um, the index of 74 uh, for engagement is actually the same as it was last year. So there hasn't been a particular improvement, but a 74% engagement is actually a very uh, positive result and, uh, and we should be very pleased with that. Satisfaction at 65, there was no comparison to 2018. Um, and the other one I'd just highlight is the um, job-related stress at 23%, is that um, stress is actually outlined as being high to severe, and that is 23% of employees agreeing that, that um, their stress is actually at uh, that high to severe level, which is very concerning. And, um, and some things that we'll be talking about today, of course, because we've been putting some things in place in the last year to, um, to take some action in that space, but quite concerning. One of the positives uh, is that it was 25% last year. It's reduced to 23%, um, but we will continue to, uh, to endeavour to make some significant changes in that space. So what I thought <clears throat> in a 10-minute presentation, I can't take you through the 95-slide deck um, that we have, um, but I can uh, show you some of the analysis we've had and talk to you a bit about what's going um, well at the organisational level and, uh, and what's not going so well. So the, the, what's going well? This first one was safety. Um, we had 62% um, in 90... In, sorry, 2018, 62% of employees agreed that their organisation provides a safe working environment, and that's um, gone up to 88% in 2019, which is a good improvement. The 73% you see is the average of a number of questions, so that's why it's slightly different to some of the, some of the stats that I'll provide to you. Integrity has um, decreased by 5%. Um, however, it's gone down from 94% to 89%, so um, that's certainly quite positive. The learning and development has certainly come through as an area of focus, and some areas have come across as concerning that there should be more training and more learning and development provided, but there certainly has been an overall improvement in the learning and development score. Senior leadership uh, at 69%. Uh, for these ones, this focuses mostly on the strategic direction and the values. So being more aware from our uh, senior managers about uh, our alignment to the strategic direction and ensuring that we role model the values of the sorts of questions um, that this is alluding to. And the results um, averaged 6% uh, higher than last year and 4% higher than our comparator group. So... Um, <laughs> So not too bad for senior leadership, but I'll show you some other stats on, um, on wellbeing soon that, um, that sort of, you know, balance that out a bit. Um, on change management, there has been an interesting overall improvement of 9% from 2018 to 19, um, which would suggest that the perceptions towards change management at an organisational wide level have actually been quite positive. One of the theories, and I'd, you know, love to, to know what you think about it, Maybe there's been a bit less change in the last year than there had been for the couple of years before that with the, the move, of course. Um, but there's also some great work being undertaken on the EMR and a lot of change management support and communication being provided there. So um, there's some improvement. But 53% is not you know, a fantastic result, but nevertheless a 9% improvement on the year before. What do we need to focus on? 
The first one and the most important, and we'll be talking a bit about it when we talk about Are You OK, is the psychological health of our employees. And um, despite this being a, sort of an average improvement compared to the, um, and better than the comparator group, it is highlighted by our employees as an as a area for concern. So we, we need to do some work in this space. One of the programs that I think is outstanding and has shown great leadership from Jack Matheson is the nursing program called CARE, which is Compassion and Resilience Education Program. And that program is uh, led by the NUMS, led by Jack and supported by people and culture. And it's really ensuring that that is a tailored program to support our nurses in their own psychological health and wellbeing, and particularly in managing resilience and, um, and compassion fatigue. We've started to uh, talk to research about that. Research are also very keen to lead the way in doing some work with our research colleagues. Um, and we're working with doctors as well. So we will be continuing to expand that program and roll that out as one of the key facets. And, of course, we all need to start with ourselves and ensure that we are well um, before we can help others. So more to come in this space. On workload, um, there has been an average 6% improvement, um, but people are still feeling as though they don't have sufficient time to do their jobs effectively, and at 57%, um, that can, needs to continue to improve. Safe to speak up is another one that concerns me again, 64%. It's not, it's not really bad, um, and it is higher than our comparator group. But there's only 61% of our employees agree that they feel safe to speak up. And it's, I find that very concerning and um, certainly will be a high priority for the coming year as well. On innovation, this is a new question for us. We didn't do anything on this last year, um, so we have no comparison. But to hear that only 57% of employees agree that they've contributed ideas for improvement um, is, you know, a bit disappointing, particularly because innovation is actually one of our values. So we'd love people to be able to come up with ideas and see what they can do to make a difference in their workplace. And respect is the last one. Again, at 78%, that is, that is good. And, in fact, there's a 30% improvement in one of, in one of those particular scores. Um, but... When, uh, when I can see a score that says that the organisation, employees feel that the organisation is more tolerant of improper conduct than we were last year, then I'm quite concerned about that because <laughs> we are not tolerant of improper conduct and we, we will take action. And um, we need to help people understand that. And that will be linked to the psychological health. It will be linked to the safe to speak up and linked to how um, informative we are about the processes that are available to you. The people and culture team are here to help you. Your first port of call is always your manager. But if you can't go to your manager or you find that that's insufficient for you, come and speak to us in people and culture. We are going to be creating a pop-up stall that will be, um, we're hoping to be provided every Tuesday likely to be in the staff area and you can come and have a chat to make an appointment and we can help guide you through any people and culture needs that you have as well. So we want to make sure that we are open and available to you. So what have we been working on? I've talked about the Compassion and Resilience Education Program for Nurses uh, launched and the great leadership of Jack uh, Matheson in this space and this will continue. There's a new um, reporting system in place for reporting the experiences of bullying and harassment, so we are able to continue to track and also hold the business partners to account to ensure that any issues that are raised are followed through and are closed, so that um, to the satisfaction of all parties, of course, so that we... Um, we're not just sort of being told about it. We need to understand what's formal, what's informal, and take action on that as well. There's a rollout of the electronic payslips. We know that systems feel like they're moving slowly here and the people's systems, we know um, we have opportunities to improve. But one small win in having an electronic payslip rather than a paper one. The Culture Champions work is fantastic to see. We're working on the Peter Mac Pledge and ensuring that the words that, um, that help us understand the behaviours that are needed within this organisation to make us feel safe, to make us feel inspired every day, are being created and, of course, you'll be consulted in those before they're finalised as well. We're starting with the Culture Champions and their input has been outstanding. We have the Peter Mac Gender Equity Strategy um, launched and we've commenced some work there. We also have the opportunity for um, some focus groups. So we've run a couple and we've got a couple more um, that are coming up as well. So please do, um, you can send a, an email to gender.equity 
at petermac.org and um, they can inform you about what um, focus groups and what activities being undertaken for our gender equity strategy. And the last one is the fitness passport was introduced this year. We were pleasantly surprised at the take up of this. We had heard and surveyed people. People had said they felt that, you know, having affordable fitness um, opportunities was really important to them. And, um, you know, I think Martin's leadership in that has been fantastic too. So thank you. And, uh, and I, I can see that people have, have really taken to that. If you're interested in that, there's more information, of course, on the um, Peter Mac Connect. So we've adapted the people plan. Some of you will have seen this. Some, to some of you, this may be quite new. We've adapted the people plan to respond to um, the issues that have been raised and particularly the areas that have been highlighted. We'll be working in the background on, on leadership and particularly a, a program called Licence to Lead, um, helping leaders with change management. We continue the mentor program and, of course, the people strategy development will be a five-year um, strategy that aligns with the Peter Mac strategy. Um, and executive visibility is also starting to improve and I think that you'll find with Shelley Dolan coming, um, she'll be out there and about all the time. So you'll see a lot of executives soon. Um, but the focus really is actually about culture and wellbeing for this coming year and we understand that um, we need to uh, have some very positive workplace behaviours, people to feel safe in the environment in which they're working. People want to be able to report issues easily and be heard and we want people to feel safe to speak up. So we will be working on those programs. And, of course, in the wellbeing space, the psychological and, and physical health and wellbeing, there's a wellbeing working group that um, continue to work through um, from the feedback that we gained. They are representatives from your departments that are in that group and they're an admirable group of people. And um, one of the initiatives that we'll talk about shortly is Are You OK? And they are the drivers behind that. So it's uh, fantastic to see the energy. And the last pillar at the bottom um, is enabled by effective systems and processes. So we will continue to work on our people systems and processes to give your time back to you as opposed to having to fill in forms and, uh, and sign off sheets all the time. But this is a long-term strategy and it will take a little while, but we'll, do, we'll put in place whatever we can to make it easier for you. What are we doing next? Um, we're working on the learning management system that will be in place in time for EMR. So um, having uh, that in place instead of Splash, if you're currently using Splash, you'll find that the LMS is much more user-friendly and more fun to use. Um, better reports come out of, out of it as well. Uh, the Peter Mac Code of Conduct I've talked about and continuing on our um, HRIS, the information systems. Uh, there's a flexible working policy that we are um, currently commencing uh, work on and you'll see some great um, communication about that and great engagement on flexible working. Again, if you're interested, if you work through the gender equity uh, group, then that will be another one. We're reviewing and improving the suite of the policies and procedures. We understand that they have needed to be updated and upgraded. Um, better workforce reporting so that we can be held to account to the work that we do in the people and culture. Uh, the licence to lead I've talked about. The occupational violence and aggression program continues, continues on. And there's also a post-critical in, uh, incidence response support for employees, which is a suite of different uh, supports that will be available for employees to access if there is an incident and a critical incident within the organisation. So they're just um, some of the things that we are uh, working on. And finally, the, the schedule for action. There's a, a number of different things that are uh, going on. So we will be starting all of the tailored team actions. So those meetings with each of you and your leaders about your results uh, are commencing at the end of um, August to today. Um, some of those have started. And, of course, um, there'll be a three-month check-in and six-month check-in. So we won't just leave it and say, here you go, you've got your data, um, let's just run away and do other things now. Um, we will continue to check in and ensure that there continues to be action uh, based on the, the fantastic feedback that we've received from all of our employees as well. Are there any questions at all? You can put them through Menti if you want to send them without asking them out loud. That's OK. Uh, I'd like to hand over to Jennifer. Thank you. Well, hello, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Jennifer Dubell and I'm the Executive Director of the Peter McCallum Cancer Foundation. Um, for those of you... The foundation is the fundraising arm of Peter Mac and today I am here to 
remind everyone that we soon have our biggest fundraising event of the year coming up. That's on the 27th of October. The funds we raise are, uh, lend support to our research, of course, but also the core technologies in, in our research labs and also we use it to buy new technologies in on the clinical side, including most recently a gamma knife to be and a surgical robot and so on. So... The big, uh, the, a big thank you to all of those staff who've already signed up to be part of our team. The good news is it's not too late. We're just two months away. That's seven months pregnant in, uh, <laughs> in Lisa's turn. That's certainly the point of no return. Um, but but uh, it's not too late for, for you to sign up. It's an event for everyone. And do I have to do it? Not yet. Uh, um, our staff... <laughs> You've made me nervous about this. When, when to click the blessed button? <laughs> anyway, um, you, you'll be participating under uh, the Captain Ricky Johnson with staff from right across Peter Mac. So it's, it's very important for us that we have staff involvement for this event. You'll be walking, riding or running alongside patients, survivors and staff from right across Peter Mac, pharmacy, surgery, the researchers, and so on. It's a very, very motivating experience, but I can't tell you how important it is to the experience of our supporters that they are walking with the people who are using the money and people who are benefiting from all that we do. So we've created a short video here with some of our staff who are participating, telling you why that they why they have signed up, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Ready, Jai? <laughs> takes, takes mouse, puts it on that arrow. Go. When I signed up for Unite to Fight Cancer again this year, um, I was very proud that the team that I lead here at Peter Max, which includes patients, um, staff, researchers, family members, We'll all join together in this community event to make a difference to the lives of our patients with cancer. It gives me great pride to say that uh, our extended community uh, is very interested in improving the lives of our patients with cancer. And I think Unite to Fight Cancer gives us a great opportunity uh, to make a difference. When I signed up last year, I was actually quite emotional at the start line because my mum passed away from cancer when I was 18. And it actually took me back and you could see all these people who had cancer, who'd recovered from cancer, but also staff members and researchers. And for people like myself who are doing research, it's actually really empowering to be part of people who've actually recovered from cancer. And it's really inspiring in that respect. I would say definitely do it. It's a fun activity. It's a way of getting to know other um, colleagues in Peter Mac. It's also an additional way of supporting our patients. You can actually help them by fundraising as well. I would definitely encourage more Peter Mac staff to sign up. Um, having done it last year, it was actually quite an amazing experience to walk with people who've survived cancer, people who are doing research into cancer, and staff and patients as well, and it was a terrific event. I wouldn't actually be doing the research that we're doing in the Peter Mac without support, so it's actually been incredibly important for me personally. I was very thankful for all the enthusiasm that everybody had um, devoting their time and their creativity for this event. I think it provides a very good opportunity to come all together to actually unite and be able to fundraise and help and support our patients even more. First, I work full-time in cancer. I understand what it means for my patients to be involved in cancer research and discovery. And second, like many of you out there, cancer has touched my family and so it becomes a very personal journey. Unite to Fight Cancer is a great opportunity to make a difference and help us improve the lives of all our patients with cancer. He looks happy. He's a great contributor. Of course he is, because we bought him a new robot, right? <laughs> so... It's not too late for you to, to sign up. You'll get ac uh, access to a personal coach who will help you reach your fundraising goal of $750, and you get lots of training tips for your walking, riding or, or running. It's free for Peter Mac staff to sign up, so you just go to the Unite to Fight website and uh, plug in a code. Do you want me to... 
The code is staff 19. It's not a secret code for them. <laughs> Were you whispering to press this button again? No. Um, so, as I said, you can join uh, Ricky Johnson. He'll egg you on. But we have Steph, who's just here in the front. She can answer any questions that you might have. So, and uh, we'll help you with ideas about fundraising, trivia nights and so on. She's a guru and uh, it's going really well. So we've got about 140 staff now. So really you're an outlier if you're not part of the team. So... Um, do join us. We look forward to having you. Thank you. And I'm going to hand back now to Helen. Would you like me to press the button? Thank you. That would be lovely. Down. <laughs> I've had a costume change. You'll, you'll notice. Yeah. Just added a bit of yellow. Um, OK, so I'd love to talk to you now about Are You OK Day. It's on the 12th of September. I'd love you to diarise that date. I thought that I'd introduce the background of Are You OK? You may not be aware um, of uh, Barry Larkin and uh, his son, Gavin, who actually started this um, program. Unfortunately, Barry Larkin was not OK and his suicide left his family and friends in deep grief, grief and with endless questions. And if someone had have asked him if he was OK, there may have been a different outcome. So that's the origin of this, and it's, it just shows how critical um, this is. There's some interesting stats here, and this is a great um, support from the Are You OK website. 63% uh, of Australians are not confident they know the signs that someone might be struggling uh, with life, and 41% hadn't asked someone if they were OK because they weren't sure they knew the signs. And I think when I've spoken to people who are experiencing grief, one of the things that surprises them the most is that people don't talk to them about it. And it's probably not because they don't care, it's probably just because they don't know what to say or they're not sure whether they should say anything or not. Um, but it sounds like it's really worth um, asking them, are you OK? There is hope, one in two, so 49% believe they'd be more confident starting a conversation if they knew what the signs were. So there's a bit of a video. Is this where I go and press the button? <laughs> Jennifer knows Alec now. and Jenny enjoy a good laugh at work. Though Alex noticed Jenny has been distant and distracted lately, his gut is telling him something's going on. We want Alec to trust his gut, reach out to Jenny and start a conversation. Alex a bit worried he could say the wrong thing, but he can feel confident if he follows Are You OK's four conversation steps. Ask Are You OK? Alex should pick a comfortable, quiet place and the right time to ask Jenny how everything's going. He can mention his concern and the changes he's noticed. Alex should listen instead of trying to immediately fix Jenny's problems. Encourage action. Alec can help Jenny think of steps she can take to manage her situation, such as chatting to friends or family, a GP or other professional support, such as an employee assistance program. Alex should check in a few days later let Jenny know he's been thinking of her and wants to know how she's been going. If Jenny's not ready to chat to him, he can encourage her to open up to someone she trusts. If you're worried about a workmate, reach out and start a conversation using the four steps. Ask, listen, encourage action and check in. Alec can make a difference and so can you. Are you OK? So why are we participating in Are You OK Day? Well, here's some stats um, that I didn't share earlier, um, but I think are quite important. So rating the current level of stress, of work-related stress, 23% high to severe. So I did, I did mention that. And then uh, the employees who agree or strongly agree to these questions, senior leaders show support for stress prevention through involvement and commitment. Senior leaders consider the psychological health of employees to be as important as productivity. In my workplace, there's good communication about psychological safety issues that affect me. Now, that one actually has improved, and I think the care program has probably been one of the reasons that there's been a really great improvement in that area, but it's still far too low. And then all levels of my organisation are involved in the prevention of stress. This is not about sitting back and waiting for someone to do something for us. This is about us, me personally, you personally, having a think about what you can do for yourself having a think about what you can do for other people, 
And I, um, I ask you to please um, consider participation. So, we've got some exciting opportunities. We would love you to host a, an event of some sort. It might be um, a midnight snack if you're here overnight. It could be a morning tea. Um, anything that would um, help to promote and have the conversation about Are You OK Day. There's a great webinar that um, the EAP have provided that's available on Peter Mac Connect. You can have a look at that. We'd ask for that um, the week of the 9th to the, 9th to the 13th that you start a meeting with an Are You OK message. So are we all OK? There's been some meetings that I just check in with the team and say, are we all here today? Are we all OK? And we take the time to listen to what's on their mind before we actually get stuck into the meeting. And it makes the meeting a lot more productive um, to be able to have done that. We're yellow on Are You OK Day. Um, there's also a new directory of external supports. So that's all available on Peter Mac Connect um, and supports on, uh, for employee mental health and wellbeing as well. There's a lunchtime concert on Thursday, the 12th of September. The music therapists will be promoting Are You OK Day. Um, we'll, uh, we ask you also to create a short selfie video. And I haven't just asked you to do that. I've actually done it myself already. So um, you can have a look at my beautiful artwork of Selfie um, on Workplace by Facebook and look for the Employee work, uh, Wellbeing Group. And how you can do that is you can actually just type in Workplace by Facebook. It will come straight up. You can say that you want to go in. When you put your work email address in, it will automatically show you to the Peter Mac <coughs> domain. And that's where all of our um, workplace sites are available for us to start communities and start connecting with one another. So you can upload your videos, you can see other people's videos, um, and you can start to participate in Are You OK Day. If you do run an event, we'd love you to post it on that, uh, on that event site as well. And uh, let us know what you're doing, show some photos of what you've done, and let's get behind um, this particular program. There are some fantastic resource materials available. They're very accessible, um, easy to read and, um, and fun to, fun to um, uh, understand a bit more about um, in the ways in which they've shown them. This is the workplace um, page. So you can see on the left-hand side there, there's a number of different groups that have been established. And this one is an ongoing employee wellbeing at Peter Mac uh, place for us to all be able to participate. We've certainly highlighted Are You OK for this particular time, but we hope that with a whole lot of people registering and becoming a part of this community, that this isn't about waiting for the hierarchy, waiting for senior leaders. This is about all of us participating and helping each other um, to share information and share support with each other on our employee to improve our employee wellbeing. So, for more information, there'll be a staff email being sent to you. Um, you can check Peter Mac Connect um, for the updates. Have a look on the website. There's really great information on there. And, of course, look out for your peers and colleagues and remember to ask, are you OK? Thanks. Okay, so now we get to the exciting um, bit, hopefully, not too terrifying. Sorry. Which button Sorry. do we press for this one? <coughs> That's all right. Um... So this was the most voted for question. Oh, well, there you go. Well, <laughs> welcome, Box Hill. We... <laughs> Just click down to the next question. OK. All right, I can't answer this. Who has the answer to the Peter Mac versus Week High AFL footy round? Robin. Um, we did sorry. very well, but we did not win. <laughs> we did not win. We Encouragement award, excellent. <laughs> um, more training. <laughs> um, okay, when will we know more about the EMR training schedule? Um, that is still a work in progress. Um, we should, we are working very hard, firstly, to secure meeting rooms. 
Um, there is a phenomenal amount of um, staff and number of hours per staff that we need to accommodate. Uh, we are looking at uh, running some sessions back at East Melbourne for those people who want to go back and enjoy a day there. Um, and, but we also need to know that we will be commandeering, literally, um, a large number of meeting rooms around um, Peter Mac in order to get through the training. Training will be in predominantly in March and April next year, so the actual timetables are not available yet. But end of September, there you go, great, we should have uh, that available. Where did we rank in Australia? Where's Ricky? Go on. They were, we were the only Australian in the top 200, so... One, two, yeah. Excellent. Oh, in Australia, sorry. Yeah. Well, so one in Australia because we're the only one. <laughs> when are the Foundation grants being announced? Imminent. 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 <laughs> signed off on the um, successful and sadly unsuccessful letters. So. Okay, so within the next week, we'll sign. Excellent. Can we adopt the Royal Melbourne model, rebullying and harassment? Okay, so uh, my understanding of the Royal Melbourne Hospital uh, model is actually one in which people anonymously report bullying and harassment. Um, we actually would prefer that we own um, taking on complaints and we ensure that we have the people identified. What has happened is that it's backfired in some places where... Um, people are unaware then of who provided the, um, the complaint and therefore they can't go and address the issue directly with the person. We'd encourage direct conversations first. If that can't happen, we'd encourage going to a manager and then to people and culture, which is our current process. But I, I have researched and we have got some good ideas in this space. It's coming. How should we expect managers to respond to the people matter feedback? Do you want to comment? So what we're, what we're expecting from managers this year is a little bit different from last year. Last year they relied on people and culture to be sort of running and running the workshops and the sessions. This year we're asking that the leaders are the ones that lead those sessions. They take their data, they do their own analysis, they add their own slides in of their own perspectives and then they ask their, their team for their perspectives as well. And then the team themselves will workshop. So people and culture and the organisation development team will support them um, in doing that. But yes, we'll be running, uh, we'll be encouraging in your meetings and um, that the workshops are being run. Can we upload from the EMR into the My Health Record? Absolutely. Um, and that will be the plan. Another one, Helen. When's the new reporting system? <laughs> The system's been in place since February this year and, um, and so we are starting to get some uh, trending reports. It's a bit early to get anything that we can fully report. We'd rather have about six months' worth of data first. But you'll actually start to see some of the outcomes of those. We'll share that when we share some of our reporting as well. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, uh, there's, sorry, there's one more question. On this one. Uh, yes, there are more gender equity focus groups. Yeah. Did you put that question in? The finger was very busy. Um, any other questions that have, people haven't put on Menti because they didn't bring their mobile phone with them today? No? 
All right. Um, does everybody like Menti? Can we have a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Thumbs up? Great. Cool. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much, everybody, and um, see you in September.